EDA platform, in other words, the um, IC design capability, IC design platform on the cloud so that uh, we can easily scale up or scale down the um, IC design workloads based on the demand. So for IC design, we use a lot of um, the third party uh, vendor tools from Synopsys, Cadence, Mental Graphics. Now it's called the, the, the Siemens EDA. And we wanted to make this um, design environment uh, cloud agnostic by implementing them on top of this Red Hat OpenShift. So the first key feature is the um, EDA workload uh, infrastructure service. We, we provide, we try to provide multi-cloud or cloud agnostic design environments with the um, automated provision and deletion of the uh, virtual server instances based on the demand, the um, workload that demand of, at that time. As a matter of fact, um, IBM Cloud team already demonstrated the um, capability to optimize the um, underlying infrastructure uh, to specific workloads. So far, the, um, the primary focus has been in the um, financial banking service um, sector, but we think that um, sort of the similar customization is possible for IC uh, design workload. In other words, EDA design workload. Then there is um, AI ML, driven design flow orchestration layer. The, the key message here is that uh, it's not just hosting these EDA tools on the cloud. Um, we have the capability to provide more scalable workload executions and enhancing IC design capability using AI ML techniques, primarily for the um, design productivity um, improvement. You know, through several um, experiments, we have ample empirical data demonstrating that um, we can produce higher quality of the result from somewhere like 10 to 20% better solutions in shorter turnaround time using our enhanced AI ML flow um, orchestration capability. And as a proof point of AI ML driven enhanced um, design capability, in the latest slides, um, you know, synthesis and PNL to parameter tuning work will be um, presented in, in more detail. What is the goal? Ultimately, the um, goal of this EDA as a service is to improve the um, IC design productivity in two aspects. One, by producing higher quality of the result using this AI ML techniques. And second, by reducing the total turnaround time. And we accomplish this by automating the infrastructure setup time even with um, the multi-cloud environment, and also second, by reducing the actual design optimization turnaround time. By the way, this is kind of the, um, what we mean by IC design platform. It's a design environment where users get into here and, and conduct their own design activities. The key components from here are design tools and licenses and design flow scripts and also related um, the technology data such as PDKs and key IEPs, those need to be populated there. And, and what we are trying to accomplish is to enable this design platform almost automatically regardless of the um, underlying computational fabrics, computational platform or on-plan or clouds. That's what we mean by platform agnostic or cloud agnostic here. Here, I'm just showing IBM Cloud and Azure as an example, but there is no reason that we cannot use um, Google Cloud or, or um, AWS even, because we are making this design platform cloud agnostic by using this Red Hat OpenShift.
So as a sort of the um, background information, let me briefly overview the typical design flow for digital design. You know, sometimes it's called the, um, the RTL to GDS flow, or it's also called the synthesis and PNR flow. The point is that, you know, this flow over shown over here is one of the uh, very representative application workflows and chip design process, particularly for um, digital design. And synthesis and PNR basically takes the design specification uh, or description as input. In our case, we use um, VHDL or Vela languages called um, HDL, Hardware Description Language. And we go through a series of sequential optimization like this, like synthesis, flow planning, placement, and character synthesis, routing, uh, timing closure for sign off, timing analysis, and physical verification. And eventually, we generate a layout file called um, GDS over here. And once you have a GDS file that satisfies all the um, design requirements, such as um, you know, timing, power, routability, et cetera, then basically you're done because this um, GDS file is a basically a um, blueprint for the actual chip manufacturing. So I'm showing only a single iteration over here, but usually we have to run multiple iteration of this synthesis and PNR to generate a GDS that satisfies all the um, design requirements, such as timing, power, and routability. So, Naturally, this becomes an iterative optimization process requiring uh, multiple iterations. Um, this synthesis in PNR, as you know, is very um, computation centric, requiring a large memory footprints, very hard to paralyze, yet it is a very core part of the digital chip design process. And a few interesting points on this synthesis and PNR for digital design. First, it consists of the multiple subtasks like this synthesis, flow planning, placement, character synthesis, routing, timing closure, physical verification. And, you know, for each um, subtask, each task like um, any of this, we have choices of running different tools from different vendors like um, Synopsys, Cadence, or Zoom and CDA. Those are typical vendors for chip, chip design tools. For example, for logic synthesis, you know, we can use Synopsys Design Compiler or Cadence Genus. And PNR steps, we can use Synopsys ICC2 or Cadence Inovus, for example. And for physical verification, we can use, you know, Mentor Caliber, Synopsys ICB, or even Cadence Pegasus. So, first point is that we have options for the multiple tools uh, uh, for each um, task optimization. Second, you know, this workload requires large storage. You know, the required PDK, and standard cell library, those are technology related files that we need to use for chip design. And they can easily eat up more than one terabyte nowadays. The required tool licenses or installations can take up several hundreds of gigabytes easily. Moreover, the synthesis and PNR itself generates huge collateral data such as row files, reports file, layout files, et cetera, which are very essential for the um, analysis and debugging. So in our previous experience for a um, single chip design project, you know, we've seen the cases where we need more than 10 terabyte of storage for the project. So storage capacity is a very important factor 
for the um, IC design capability. And third, here, yeah, typically um, a design has hierarchical structure. So synthesis MPNR flow needs to be applied at different scales, like um, leaf rebel macros like this in this example, like macro rebel, or two unit, which consists of multiple macros, or two entire core level, and the whole integrated chip level as shown in this example. And different levels of synthesis and PNR flow requires different amounts of the physical memory footprints and computational resources. In other words, the demands are different at the different levels. That's why it's very important of that flexible or agile capability to scale up or scale down the computational and storage requirements per uh, demand. Okay. So I'll, I'll come back to this slide one more time in a later slide. So here again is, is a kind of the single established design flow that can be applied to multiple of the macro design. And different designs might have different objectives and constraints. For example, for some design, timing optimization or higher, you know, the performance are more important, while for some others, the power reduction is more important. So to satisfy such different objectives and constraints, typically um, design tools have several so-called flow parameters, or also it is known, they are known as a knobs, which kind of the change their tool behaviors. The problem is that there are so many parameters for each tool. As I mentioned before, yeah, each subtask, we have choices to run different tools from different vendors, and each tool of from each vendor, they have a set of the parameters. So the, the fundamental problem is that there are so many parameters that affect the outcomes of a design and, and they are kind of the cascaded each other due to these um, sequential optimization process. So it's extremely difficult to find optimal settings of these parameters a set of the parameters in, in a cascaded manner to um, produce the um, best quality of the result. And, you know, it, according to um, a given design and according to its objective while satisfying, you know, whatever the um, given constraints. So if you look at the um, graph on the lower left corner, you know, it shows the um, difficulty of a flow parameter tuning problem. You know, here, each dot is a design result obtained by a specific set of the um, parameter values for a given design, the same design, same RTL design. And X axis is the design density here. This is the design density. In other words, the size of the uh, macro and Y axis is the overall power consumption. And as you can tell, even for the same design and even for the same design density, the power consumption can vary quite significantly due to the, um, the different settings of the um, parameter values of, of these parameters. Similarly, for the same power, ISO power here, the design density can vary quite significantly too. Again, this is due to the um, different settings of parameter values. Again, all these dots are outcomes from the same design, same RTL input design, with um, simply different settings of all you know these small set of the selected parameters. And finding the best solution in this solution space which is kind of this area, which requires the smallest area and, and you know, lowest um, power consumption. 
finding that best solution in this large solution space is not a trivial task. And this is the um, difficulty of the flow parameter tuning problem. So this flow parameter tuning problem is the one that um, we will provide a, a one solution using AIML infused techniques uh, running on the cloud in, in the couple of slides later. Okay. And here we want to mention that um, another kind of the um, important characteristics uh, of the design flow, the notion of um, design flow as a code here. So design flows are are uh, written at code nowadays. What you know, it's not just um you know the transistor based um, design anymore. It became a code, which consists of um simply a series of tool commands and user functions. And naturally, we use code repository such as Git uh, to maintain these um design flow codes, and that's pretty normal. For example. We have many design flows within IBM uh, maintained uh, within the um, IBM maintained GitHub repository. By the way, this is not just IBM. You know, people started to use uh, these um, repository to maintain their design flows in code repository. And one good example is the um, repository uh, called Open Road Flow Scripts. And Open Road is one of the um, open source based on design flows that are being developed, uh, led by the um, University of California, San Diego. And they are already um, available in the public GitHub. Similar to the um, typical software code and development, design flows are continuously evolving because of um, Sometimes design updates like RTL updates, or even sometimes technology information like um, PDK and library, those are being updates and that change the result uh, of the same design. And or even the you know, flow steps or flow scripts, or even the um, parameters that we are using. All those different things can, up, you know, can be updated and they, they those updates will lead to a different results. So on, on the figure on the right side over here, I'm, I'm showing the one example here. It shows the um, kind of the commit history of one of the um, IBM internal design for, oh, sorry, one of the um, IBM design internal flows. And you can see that um, multiple designers are committing their code change to the flow and there are continuous flow updates, as you can see in this um, activity, uh, uh, the activity graph. So because the design flows are codes and continuously changing, the typical DevOps techniques such as CICD, like, you know, CICD, continuous integration and continuous development you know, those are also significantly being used. Those techniques are also significantly being used in the chip design area, as you will see in the um, later presentation. So I think um, that's enough for the background information. And with that, um, let me get into um, a little bit more detailed um, information, the, the real meat of the um, technical aspects of this project. So this is a little bit of a um, more technical level of what we have been working in the past several months. We first recognized that um, chip design flow development and execution processes are similar to those of the typical software development, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. And we demonstrated that um, a chip design flow can be containerized and executed on the cloud. So that's the kind of the first um, item. And then for digital design flow, we transformed this IC design flow and optimization 
as a parameter tuning um, problem of the um, deployed tools. And we applied AI ML based parameter tuning algorithm to the containerized design flow. And during this you know, process or task, we utilized the platform called uh, Ray, which I'll get into uh, what Ray is in a few slides later. For to make it more scalable and distributable executions um, of the parameter tuning problems for IC design optimization. So that's the kind of the ML based design flow tuning with containerized design flow. And then finally, we enabled this CI CD continuous integration and continuous development pipeline around the um, containerized automatic parameter tuning work, which is number two item for IC design flow. And we demonstrated that um, how IBM internal design team is using it for uh, the um, build process, night, nightly flow build process and flow development. So those are kind of the high level three major bullet items that um, we developed or we, we have been working on in the past. So first item. So this diagram here shows a brief um, kind of the architecture of our containerized and design flow. Um, as I mentioned earlier, design flow involves uh, multiple steps and tools and individual tools have different uh, requirements and, and dependent libraries. For example, you know, Cadence um, Genus for logic synthesis, it has own requirement and dependent uh, libraries. Also, Synopsys ICC, IC um, compiler for PNR, it has its own requirement and dependent libraries. So we created a kind of the custom container image which can be executed at various EDA tools used in our design flow that I showed on the, on the earlier slide on the, on the, in the um, sequential optimization. Also to host a large amount of the data like PDK, standard cell library, tools or you know, user um, design execution with the collateral data like log files and, and layout files. To host those large amount of the data, we created a multiple persistent volume EV, each hosting like these um, files, like PDK libraries, tools, and user workspace. And we have also enabled batch run capabil capability in our kind of the containerized flow based on the flow description. And like I said, you know, a single established design flow is applied to multiple different macros at the same time. And because of this, uh, designers usually run multiple batch jobs. So we have enabled the same flow, same batch job, you know, the, the run capability in the um, containerized design flow using this cloud resource manager. In our case, we are using Kubernetes Helm as a cloud resource manager. And given users flow scripts or descriptions, it automatically provisions compute resources across the compute cluster and the runs corresponding the design flow. And once it's finished, then it automatically, uh, the pre-provisioned resources are automatically released so that um, the resources are not wasted. It can be used for different tasks. So now we further extend this capability of the containerized design flow with um, additional capability. So now, you know, let me talk about the design flow tuning with a containerized flow. I'm reusing the slide that I presented earlier, but again, single established design flow is applied to the um, multiple macros in 
as I mentioned, different macros can have a different objectives and con constraints. For example, you know, for some macros, maybe you know we we have to do more um, timing optimizations, while for other macros we have to do more power you know reduction, power optimization. So, to satisfy you know, such different objectives and constraints. Um, EDA tools provide so-called flow parameters like this, which change the um, change and optimize the tool be behavior. So we can guide tools to spend more time to search for better logical structure, or we, we may have to have um, tools to do more power optimization and using different routing schemes. So the problem is that um, there are so many hundreds of parameters that affect design outcomes. So it's very hard to find an optimal you know, parameter setting that satisfies the specific design objectives and constraints. And again, as I mentioned in this um, plot over here, the design space is large and to find the kind of the optimal solution that produces the uh, lowest power consumption with the um, smallest area, silicon area. It's not a trivial task. So the question is, you know, how can you find this kind of the um, optimal or sweet spot of the um, design solution when a different characteristics of the designs are given by finding the um, right appropriate set of the parameter values, parameter values that will guide responding tools toward the direction. That's the kind of the gist of the um, this flow parameter tuning problem. Okay. So to tackle this um, flow parameter tuning problem, we have developed a machine learning based on automatic flow tuner. The tuner sees the design flow as a black box, as you can see. In other words, we can plug in any of the arbitrary design tools or flow over there while providing a very generic interface to apply the parameters to the flow and compute the corresponding reward from the result. With such generic interface, our flow tuner is applicable to any kind of design flow. Furthermore, it, it provides a very flexible user interface where users can specify the preferred um, search algorithm or resource constraints or tunable parameters, et cetera. So here you're seeing the um, kind of the uh, very simplified pseudocode, how it works. Essentially, as an again iterative parameter uh, search engine, and at each iteration here, which is essentially the inside of the while loop, it creates a new parameter setting for each individual tools, guided by the machine learning algorithm. Execute the flow, execute the design flow, and get the result, compute the reward with a reward value. And once the um, parameter search is done until the maximized the um, max iteration, it returns whatever the best result. It, it keep iterating this flow until it reaches the max, maximum iteration and returns whatever the best result it find uh, until that time. Oops. Okay. So here is the um, kind of, you know, we have extended our flow tuner using the um, containerized uh, design flow, which naturally um, supports scalable and distributable execution. So we use um, here Ray as um, the uh, scalable and distributable um, platform, execution platform. Ray is the, um, an open source distributed um, execution framework developed by University of California at Berkeley. 
And, you know, given a tunable parameter shown over here, flow tuner creates multiple flow tuning trials. So, and the ray basically distribute those um, different individual flow tuning trial to work a pause and execute the design flow in parallel. And the tuner continues generating these um, tuning trial as it progress and finally gives us the uh, best result, which is kind of the, uh, the um, parallel execution of this um, parallel execution of this um, pseudocode over here, okay? So for that um, scalable and parallel execution of this flow parameter tuning algorithm, we simplify, we simply um, utilize this um, ray platform as a kind of the middle layer uh, of the, um, of the uh, execution stacks. So this is kind of the um, key uh, sort of the um, result that we produced from this work you know, to demonstrate the um, effectiveness of our flow tuner work. We applied it to an um, internal IBM design flow uh, targeting a commercial 14 nanometer technology. And basically we took the, um, an expert designers optimized the result, already optimized the result as a baseline. And the design had a mature timing. So designer specified the power minimization, power optimization as a tuning objective. And we selected about 17 synthesis and PNR parameters for tuning and ran our tuner for 50 iteration. As, as you can see from here. And the plot on the left, you know, this side showed the tuning progress. The X axis is the um, number of iterations, again, the max 50 iteration. And the Y axis as the measured power consumption. And as you can see, as it progresses, the tuner can reduce the power efficiently, eventually, like this. And if you see this um, power optimization history graph on the right side, um, compared to the um, designer's baseline, you know, the designer was able to optimize the power manually, like um, in the first iteration, less than 1%, second iteration, about 1.2%, and third iteration, about 2.5%. And then we fed this result into this automatic flow tuner algorithm. And as you can see, we were able to um, reduce the power consumption by almost um, 9% using our flow tuner, AIML based on flow tuner. So as you can see, um, this is quite a um, pretty significant result again we took the, um, the already optimized design as, as an input for our flow tuner and we achieved about 9% additional power reduction. So th this is the kind of the, um, we, we saw that um, this is a very promising result. At least this is a point where we were convinced that um, this AIML based flow tuning, it cannot replace the um, expert designers, but at least we were convinced that um, it can you know, serve as a kind of assistant function for the um, expert or novice designer to produce a very um, competitive um, result for this um, optimization process. So under our project, now uh, this is, you know, we have developed a, uh, a design flow CICD, again, continuous integration and continuous pipeline, utilizing our, you know, the containerized design flow. The diagram here illustrates our CICD pipeline for 
the um, the uh, you know the design flow. It starts from the um, flow repository where people can commit their flows and codes updates, as I've shown in in a couple of slides earlier. And the CI/CD container, which is Jenkins in this case, we are using the um, the Jenkins open source tool. Running in our cloud cluster, scans the code repository periodically, and it can detect any code updates. If there is a code update, then the CI/CD container creates corresponding the walker, and runs the design flow from beginning to the end. So if you look at here, you know carefully, then you will see that um, some design setup and synthesis. PNR and CTS route, um, the timing analysis, and you know, the uh, physical uh, verification, which I've shown in the, um, the sequential optimization um, in, in the earlier slide. So it executes whenever there is a code update, it can automatically detect the code updates and it can spin off corresponding the uh, worker pod to execute this um, pipeline or flow. Once this um, flow execution has completed, then the, um, the flow matrix are pushed to a, a, a database container. In this case, we are using MongoDB um, database, which is also running as a container in our cluster. And then we further have a um, dashboard application which retrieve, re retrieves those data from the database and visualize the build history in a, in a summarized uh, manner. So we have this, um, we, we have delivered this design flow CI CD pipeline using the um, containerized design flow to our um, IBM research internal design team. And this capability is currently, you know, being used for the um, nightly, you know, daily based basis design flow build, covering the entire design flow from logic synthesis to synthesis through um, PNR to the DRC LBS uh, physical verification. And with the um, containerized design flow and machine learning enabled flow tuner. We are working to enable a machine learning enabled continuous um, design flow evolution at scale. We think that um, a design flow can evolve continuously and all autonomously by utilizing the cloud native containerized flow, as well as the machine learning based on design flow tuner. And whenever there is a design and flow updates, it will invoke the CI CD pipeline, and there will be multiple workers running uh, the at scale with the different flow parameters, trying to find the best um, parameter configuration. And the build results are stored back at the knowledge database, and we should be able to track the continuous um, quality of the result improvement from the dashboard application. So this is kind of the um, the infrastructure that we envisioned that uh, we can automate at the same time, we can use the cloud infrastructure to produce the best um, quality of the result in a shorter turnaround time, okay? So at this point, let me mention that um, we tested a proof of concept of the um, EDA as a service on the um, on-chip AI accelerator design that was included in the, um, the recent IBM Talon microprocessor. As, as you might know, you know, this Talon processor is a chip announced last year that made quite a kind of a splash in the VSI area. Uh, this is the kind of the microprocessor of the um, IBM's flagship Z server. And this AI compute array accelerator core design, uh, basically um, the 
our team took this um, this AI compute array uh, design, MBW tape out chips, which is about you know, 30 square millimeter ASIC design, which is not a kind of trivial you know size of the ASIC design in terms of the size and complexity. And we demonstrated that um, you know first the design environment the IC design environment that um, RTL to GDS flow, you know, it can, and its capability of that size and complexity of the chips can be fully um, buildable on IBM clouds using the um, containerized design flow. So that was the first um, demonstration. And second, by utilizing the um, automated AIML parameter tuning capability uh, using this ray-based um, framework, we were able to demonstrate that we can improve the quality of the result quite significantly. And up to this point, it was not the, um, the true multi-cloud implementation yet. Uh, we simply used a simple Ray Kubernetes cluster on the um, Kubernetes, you know, within the um, single cloud, but currently we are working on for the true multi-cloud, cloud agnostic um, kind of implementation of this capability. Okay. So summarizing this talk, in summary, um, conceptually, uh, we're trying to build a platform agnostic design environment where design tools, licenses, for scripts and te technology data such as PDKs and key um, IPs are pre-populated. And this design environment needs to be um, created and deleted almost automatically and instantly as needed. That's very important capability. And today, although we focused on primary synthesis and PNR workflows for digital designs, we are also working on for AMS analog mixed signal designs by supporting like um, the circuit simulation and optimization capability, which is a very critical task for AMS design. Key challenges going forward, um, currently we are working on the um, assumption of, you know, the uh, bring your own license model, but, but we are hoping that um, we can support truly on um, cloud-based um, EDA tool license model, but obviously this needs to be uh, worked out together with um, EDA vendors. It's not a technology um, problem, it's more business um, problem. And which technology knows and how to provide them on the cloud? This is again a big issue and needs to be um, worked with the foundry partners Again, this is not a technology problem, more business and, and legal uh, problem. And w whenever we mention clouds, data security is always one of the um, first questions we are getting from the potential customers so far. You know, kind of we have been hand waving this aspect, the security aspects, but obviously it needs to be um, addressed. Um, but nonetheless, you know, cloud-based um, infrastructure are already uh, being used by the uh, financial sector customers, which is, which is most um, sensitive to the security aspects. So we are, um, personally, I'm kind of um, optimistic um, in, in the security aspects. And of course, in the um, next, um, you know, the phase, we'll focus on adding more and more features and the IC design capability on the cloud. So um, that's our kind of the um, key challenge as well as the feature direction that we'd like to uh, explore in the next um, couple of months. So let me let me pause here. I think um, this is my last slide. Yep. So let me pause here and I'll be more than happy to take um, any Questions. Yes, dear audience, you may ask the questions if you have any. 
you may drop the questions in the chat box also. We'll be take the uh, we'll take the questions from there. Yeah, so if you don't have any questions. Hello? Yes, sir. Please. Hold on, hold on. Uh, June presentation. Do you have a question? Uh, your voice is not clear, sir. One second. Uh, Hello? Yeah, I, I think um, Vanessa, you, you're breaking up quite heavily. I, I couldn't understand your comments. So if you can type in, you know, in a chat box, then probably it'll be better for me to understand. Okay, so. Uh... No, hold on. no, no, I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Jijun, uh, thanks for uh, the wonderful presentation. I'd like to, I, 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 I request you to, you know, give a background about this NSTC, you know, stuff and how the US, uh, you know, the semiconductor mission and all. There are a few folks, you know, from US also participating in this uh, workshop. Anything you can give some insight on this? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, as you might know, um, there's a big um, in a bill called the CHIPS Act that was uh, approved uh, about, I don't know, less than a few weeks ago. It was already signed by uh, President Biden, Biden from the uh, United States. And there will be a huge program based on that act. There will be a huge program called NSTC, National Semiconductor uh, Technology Center, where the ultimate goal is to democratizing this um, chip design environment to facilitate more and more, pave the path, accelerate the path from the lab to fab meaning that I'm um, designed to manufacturing process so that um, ultimately um, U.S. regains the, um, the leadership in the um, IC chip design capability as well as the uh, manufacturing capability. So that's the kind of the gist of the NSTC program. And program is not, um, you know, the... Um, Official yet because we haven't seen the uh, the RFP request for the um, proposal yet, but it'll be announced shortly. But under that program, there are several very important uh, the aspects around this IC design capability. One is you know having more easy to access design environment where exactly this kind of the cloud-based secure design environment will become very important. And also the chiplet-based um, design capability. As you know, Moore's law of the single core is reaching almost the end. So the alternate path to continue to improve the um, performance and power is called the chiplet based uh, design capability. So we need um, a lot of innovation in, in that um, design methodology. And third, you know, chiplet based in, you know, design methodology, meaning that um, there has to be, there have to be many, many of the um, chiplets where we should take advantage of. This is exactly where this open power or open power related IPs will be very crucial for this task. We are trying to build more and more IP repository where we can reuse those IPs to facilitate this some um, SOC design including the digital design as well as the AMS design, analog mixed signal design. So those are kind of the three very important aspects. And 
again, this open power, um, the workshop, I think the agenda and, and task items from this workshop would be very critical to, to uh, that um, NSTC project that Kanasan just mentioned. So let me, let me pause here in case there is any questions. Yeah, that's very good actually. So, uh, you know, these kind of initiatives really help, you know, lots of our innovations, you know, uh, around the world. And uh, suddenly, you know, there are opportunities uh, for everyone, you know, to get onto that too. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for that. And um, yeah, yeah, uh, back to Menka. Menka, please uh, go ahead. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the audience, please feel free to ask. So, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was a very nice presentation, and I hope the audience have enjoyed and uh, you have enlightened all our audience with your expert talk. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I hope you will be there in future also to assist us uh, uh, with such type of uh, good lectures. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you for time's words. And yeah, now I can thank go to you. bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, good night. Uh, good morning, uh, I would say. And thank you, Jijun, for thank your you. wonderful presentation. Thank you, Mr. Jujanam. I am Vineet Sahula. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. So, next speaker is Mr. Uh, Sanjay Kumar. Uh, our next speaker, according to our schedule, is uh, Mr. Toad uh, Roaster. So, a little bit about uh, Mr. Toad uh -huh. is like this. Menka, Menka, maybe we may have uh, Mr. Vinod or possibly. No. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Menka. Let's wait for sure. five minutes. Let's wait for five minutes.
सर या मिस्टर गणेशन वी आर गोइंग टू गोइंग टू प्ले दी मिस्टर टॉल्स वीडियो no 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 sir uh, the the video is there actually the vinod video actually it was uh, uploaded in the different name that was a mistake made by dr rabin and that's fine please we will do play vinod video i'm here to explain all the stuff also sure, sure. uh, online no whatever is going to present no problem no problem but you have to play the tots video also yeah yeah we'll have to play the tots video also because tot cannot make it because of his midnight See, there are let men can do it. Uh, let men can do it. Let men can do it. I will just share that. Yeah, yeah. I will. I'll be there to explain the things if they want any question or answer. You know, oh, in front of everybody. Sure, sure. Okay. Definitely. Uh, sir, it's going to take a minute to download. So, uh, so by this time, let me uh, introduce. You take your time. Uh, Menka, we have two videos. Yes. Yes, Doctor Todd and Doctor Vinod, Mr. Vinod. Whichever yes, you want I... to take first, you can. Mr. Vinod, का भी उसी folder में है. I have shared with you yesterday, ना? Fine, sir. मैं दोबारा share करता हूँ. ठीक है? I'll check, sir. Yes. So, uh, we are sorry to uh, interrupt your hold for uh, a few time. Uh, we are back now. So, uh, the next speaker is Mr. Todd uh, Roaster. A uh, little bit about. Uh, Mr. Todd is like this. He uh, is program director, open source business development at IBM, Rochester, in uh, USA. Uh, he is having more than 30 years of uh, experience at IBM. Uh, currently, he is program director at uh, for uh, open source business development at IBM since uh, November 2021 till present. And before that, he he was chief energy management engineer. From September 1992 to December 2021, approximately 30 years. Uh, he has completed his MS from University of Manchester uh, in 1992. So uh, it is a little bit about Todd uh, Roaster. Now, uh, uh, since uh, it's odd timing for him, he has put uh, his hard efforts to. Make a video, and we are going to play this video uh, before you. So, Tim, uh, the Vinod, uh, you know, I mean, sorry, Todd, uh, you know, he, he lives in the uh, U.S., uh, you know, East Coast, and you know, he can't make it because it's very early morning. I mean, around one uh, o'clock a.m. So he he uh, actually you know created the video for this program, and hopefully you know uh, any uh, any questions you know I I I would try to answer because uh, I also work in the same area whatever he works on the whole uh, you know the forty hours workshop uh, I'm organizing and you know I mean kind of you know from IBM side and open power side and you know the you know the open source technology side. So I can definitely pitch in, you know, uh, whatever questions you know you guys would ask. Okay, please go ahead, America. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm hoping to the system. Another one minute, it's going to take.
it audible? Uh, sorry, visible to everyone? Yeah, it is visible. It is visible. Go ahead. And also. Menka. A menka, the, there is a right bottom. There is a zoom option where you can zoom this video like a view full screen.